Hello guys, how are you? Welcome to Cosmic Essence Education. My name is Maitre and in this class we will be looking at one one and many one functions. So let's get started. Okay, now one one and many one function. A function has to be either a one one function or a many one function. Also, if a function is one one function, it cannot be a many one function and if a function is a many one function, it cannot be a one one function. So, one one and many one functions are mutually exclusive and exhaustive in nature. So, let's look at one one function. It is also known as injective. A one one function means that the elements in the domain all have distinct images in the codomain. By distinct we mean that two or more than two elements should not have the same image. They should all have different images in the codomain. This type of function is known as a 1-1 one, one function. How do we say which function is 1-1? One, one? So there are three ways in which we can find out if a function is a 1-1 one, one function or not. Okay, let's look at them. First, if x1 is not equal to x2 implies that f of x1 is not equal to f of x2, then we say that it is a 1-1 one, one function. It means that if we take two different elements in the domain and we see that both of them have different images their images are different as well then that function is a 1-1 one, one function for all x1 and x2 belonging to the domain. This is when all elements in the domain follow this condition. Second, if f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies that x1 is equal to x2 then we say that this is a 1-1 one, one function for all x1 and x2 belonging to the domain. Let's understand what we mean and how does it prove that it is a 1-1 one, one function. Say there are two elements x1 and x2 and the images of those elements is equal okay so if the images of two elements is equal and then we say that the two elements are also equal it would mean that both the elements that we are taking are equal and that the function is a one one function did you get it Say I am taking two images, say they are equal, so there are uh, two elements having the same image, but I afterwards say or if I prove that the two elements are also equal, then it will be counted as only one element in the set and that's why the function will be a 1-1 one, one function. These are the two ways. One more way which involves differentiation is also a good way to prove whether a function is 1-1 one, one or not. So if a function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing in its domain then we say that this function is a 1-1 one, one function. Let's see how. First I'll say, I'll tell the condition. Mathematically it means that f dash x has to be greater than 0 or f dash x has to be less than 0 for all x belonging to the domain. Let's see how. Strictly increasing function means either the function is like this 
or the graph of the function is like this. This is for strictly increasing. If a function is strictly increasing, then we see that for different values of x, there are always different values of y in both the cases. In both the cases of strictly increasing. So it is a sufficient condition. If the function is strictly decreasing, then the possible graphs are like this and like this. Again in both these graphs as well, for different values of x, there are different values of y for all x. So again, this means that this is a sufficient condition to show that the function is an onto function. I'm sorry, a 1 1 function. So these are the three conditions to prove or to see whether a function is 1 1 or not. If a function is not 1 1, then it is definitely a many one function. It is definitely a many one function. A many one function means that two or more than two elements have the same image in the codomain. This kind of graph, this kind of function is a many one function. Now in both one one and many one function, it is nowhere given whether there we need free elements in the codomain or not. So there might be free elements in the codomain. It does not matter for one one or many one function. There might be or they may not be. Okay, it doesn't matter. So uh, this is one one and many one function. Okay, let's look at a few examples. First one, I am defining a function f from the set of R to R such that f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, x and y belong to r. To see if this function is 1 or not, we can. Now we can use any of the three methods to show that the function is 1, 1. Whichever is better for us, whichever seems to be more convenient, we will be using that. There might not be possible to apply all the three methods at all times. So wherever possible, try to apply all three or which one is whichever one is convenient to you so the first one we see let x1 is not equal to x2 now if x1 is not equal to x2 if I multiply 2 on both sides it will still not be equal to each other again if I subtract 3 on both sides it will not be equal to each other. This means this is f of x1 is not equal to f of x2 for all x. That's why we can say that this function is 1 1. Let's look at the second one. If f of x1 is equal to f of x2. This means that 2x1 minus 3 is equal to 2x2 minus 3. Add 3 on both sides, so we get 2x1 is equal to 2x2. Divide by 2 on both sides, we get x1 is equal to x2. This means that this implies this, therefore we can say that the function is 1, 1. Let's apply the third method. By differentiating f of x, we get f dash x is equal to 2x minus 3 differentiation, we get 2, which is always positive. So it satisfies our condition and it is a 1, 1 function. Let's look at another example. 
function f is defined from set r to r such that f of x is equal to 2x minus sin x, x and y belong to r. If I try to apply the first one, first method, I will get 2x1 is not equal to 2x2 but I won't be able to proceed further to get f of x1 or f of x2 so we won't be able to proceed in this way if I try to apply the second method let's see what happens f of x1 is equal to f of x2 this means that 2x mi 2x1 minus sin x1 is equal to 2x2 minus sin x2 this is implies this implies that again we cannot proceed much further we will be getting 2x1 minus 2x2 is equal to sin x1 minus sin x2 and we will reach no conclusion from here either but let's see if the third method will be helpful to us third one if I differentiate f of x, f dash x is equal to 2 minus cos x. Now cos x always ranges from minus 1 to 1 only and if it is maximum at 1, if I subtract 1, I will get f dash x is minimum at 1, equal to 1. So f dash x is always positive no matter what. Since f dash x is always positive, this function is strictly increasing that's why it is a 1 1 function so we see that the third method was good for this function if I take an example of a many one function I define a function f from the set of r to r such that f of x is equal to x square where x and y belong to r then we know that the graph of x square is a upwards parabola vertex at origin and we can see that for one value of x or sorry I mean for two different values of x they have the same image so that's why this is a many one function. Okay guys, so we discussed one one and many one functions in this video. I hope you liked the video and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great videos like these. Uh, so thank you.